Hey guys, welcome back to One Stop Biology. So we are today going to discuss the very last topic of chapter three, which is human reproduction. We are going to discuss pregnancy and embryonic de development, and then we are going to discuss parturition, right? So uh, I hope you would have uh, seen all the previous videos. In the last videos, we saw how implantation occurs in the end, right? So like the uh, the zygote is formed, fertilization happens, zygote is formed, then it develops into a morula, then into a blastocyst. And that blastocyst basically becomes embedded in the endometrium of the uterus. And that embedded blastocyst basically, that, that, that process basically is nothing but implantation and that leads to pregnancy, right? So basically after implantation, what happens? After implantation, there are some finger-like projections that appear on the trophoblast, right? Now, these finger-like projections are known as chorionic villi. So, the word that you see here, right? So, these are basically are surrounded by uterine tissues and maternal blood, right? Now, the chorionic villi and the uterine tissues both become interdigitated. Right, so they both basically somehow joins each other, right? So they become interdigitated with each other and they jointly form a structural and functional unit between the developing embryo, which is the fetus, and the maternal body. And this structural and functional unit is known as placenta. This is known as placenta. Okay, so basically, once the implantation happens, placenta is formed, right? Now, this placenta facilitate the supply of whether it's oxygen or the nutrients to the embryo or the fetus, right? So, they basically facilitate the supply of oxygen and nutrients and they also remove all the carbon dioxide or the excretory waste material that is produced by the embryo. Remember, at the end, it's again going to be a developed, uh, you know, offspring. So it will release carbon dioxide if it is taking in oxygen. It will release all the excretory or waste material if it is going to get the nutrient from the supply from the maternal body, basically, right? Now, this placenta is connected with the embryo. This is connected to the embryo through an umbilical cord so remember that this placenta is connected to the embryo through the umbilical cord right and this umbilical cord basically helps in transport of substance to and from the embryo so now we first saw that the placenta helps in oxygen of supply and nutrients and removal of carbon dioxide and excretory material now what helps it to do that the umbilical cord right now placenta basically also acts as an endocrine tissue and it starts producing several hormones like it produces human chorio chorionic gonadotropin which is the hcg so basically the test that we do to detect pregnancy is to detect hcg level in the body right so it pro the placenta itself produces this hormone so the first hormone is human chorionic gonadotropin it also produces human placental lactogen it produces its estrogens and progesterones as well now in the later phase of pregnancy a hormone called relaxin is also secreted by the ovary right now let's also remember one thing that this HCG or H HPL or relaxin are produced in women only during pregnancy, right? So these hormones are produced only during pregnancy. Hmm? And in addition to that, during pregnancy, the levels of other hormones like estrogen, progesterone, cortisol, thyroxin, these are also increased various folds in the blood of the mother in the maternal blood now increased production of these hormones why it happens is because it is essential for supporting the fetal growth 
right so it is essential for fetal growth it is basically essential for metabolic changes in the mother and it is also essential for maintenance of pregnancy right so if you see this diagram you will see the human fetus inside the uterus it is within the c uterus so if you see here these finger like projections these finger like projections these are placental villi okay now here is nothing but the cavity of uterus inside here this this part is the yolk sac this basically is the embryo the fetus which is going to grow into an offspring here you see there is a plug now of mucus so basically this is giving a closure in cervix this cord that you see going here is the umbilical cord which has vessels so it because it is helping in transport right so this is the diagram of a human fetus inside the uterus right so immediately after the implantation the inner cell mass right we, we used to call it inner cell mass in the blastocyst phase right so the inner cell mass which is nothing but the embryo it differentiates so it starts differentiating into an outer layer which is ectoderm and an inner layer which is endoderm right so the embryo basically forms two layers one is out the outer layer which is ectoderm and an inner layer which is endoderm after that a middle layer also appears which is the mesoderm now these three layers give rise to all the tissues or organs in adults right so it then starts forming various tissues and organs now here you need to see that the inner cell mass contains certain cells which are known as stem cells which are known as stem cells which have potency to give rise to all and any kind of tissues and organs now again remember this right so basically the inner cell mass it has stem cells and stem cells have the capability they have the potency to give rise to all different kinds of tissues and organs right now let's see what happens in the the entire phase of human pregnancy so basically the human pregnancy lasts for 9 months okay now in the human being after one month of pregnancy after one month is over the embryo heart is formed the first organ which is formed is the heart now then basically that is why what happens is when you uh, you know you take up a test what happens is the first sign of growing fetus that is noticed by a doctor is listening to the heart sound through the stethoscope so you, you can even listen to the heart sound through the stethoscope right now what happens next by the end of the second month of pregnancy the fetus develops limbs and digits as well and but by the end of 12 weeks which is the first trimester most of the major organ systems are formed like limbs external genital organs are well developed so basically the what happens is by the end of the first 3 months by end of the first trimester all the major organs are formed now what happens after that in the fifth month you will notice the first movement of fetus and also appearance of hair in the fetus okay by sixth month body will be covered with fine hair there will be eyelids which will be separated and even eyelashes are formed right and by the end of the second trans so basically this is by end of the second trimester now what happens at the end of the pregnancy by the end of 9 months we say that the fetus is fully formed and it is ready for 
delivery okay so this is basically what pregnancy is all about now what happens during parturition let's see that so basically parturition and lactation again is, a, is basically a part of pregnancy itself and average duration of human pregnancy is about nine months this is what we saw now this duration is known as gestation period this is known as gestation period what happens after nine months of pregnancy when the fetus is fully developed there are vigorous contraction of the uterus that happens which causes expulsion or delivery of the fetus now this this process of delivery of the fetus is known as parturition okay now parturition is again you know a very complex process and it is induced by a very complex endocrine mechanism so there are signals of parturition which develop which basically originate from the fetus itself right so that signal of parturition or originate from the fully developed fetus and placenta and that it starts inducing mild uterine contractions now that is known as fetal ejection reflex now that basically releases or that triggers release of oxytocin from the maternal pituitary from the pituitary gland of the mother that fetal ejection reflex triggers release of oxytocin and oxytocin itself acts on the uterine muscle and starts causing stronger uterine contractions which again in turn stimulates further secretion of oxytocin right so the oxytocin secretion keeps on happening right till the basically it, it, what happens is the these contractions and secretion continues which results in stronger and stronger contractions and this these stronger contractions leads to expulsion of the baby out of the uterus through the birth canal and this is nothing but parturition right so basically again you see that it is a very complex process and a lot of you know different organs are involved it's not just the the you know uh, uterus that helps or the sex organs that helps but the hormone secre secreting organs as well like like pituitary right so, so the hormone secreting glands as well helps now what happens after that so after that there is another organ which plays a major role in pregnancy which is mammary gland right so mammary gland of a female undergo differentiation during pregnancy and it starts producing milk towards the end of pregnancy now this process is known as lactation this process is known as lactation right so this basically helps the mother in feeding the newborn and the milk produced during the initial few days of lactation is known as colostrum now we say that colostrum is again <clears throat> you know very very important because it has several antibodies and various nutrients which helps the the newborn to develop resistance again main, against many diseases so that is why it plays a very important role in the life of a newborn now basically this you know the the best breast feeding feeding uh, uh, during the initial period of infant growth is highly recommended by doc doctors as well for bringing in a healthy baby right so again the mammary gland and the entire process of lactation plays a very important role in pregnancy so with this we end the chapter of human reproduction you must have now realized how you know complex process it is uh, you know how time taking it is and uh, you know so many different organs or tissues or glands are involved in the entire process uh, we'll also uh, you know study it in detail once we refer to different other books we are right now going through only what is given in the ncrt of class 11th and 12th remember that right so with this we end this chapter i hope you understood the entire process of human reproduction if yes please do not forget to like the video and share it with your friends if you have any doubts please drop in uh, a message on in the comment of the video or you can also message me on the whatsapp number the number is given on the 
in the description of the video and i hope you have subscribed to the channel because you'll be getting all the updates through that thanks guys bye bye